you kill her, you will never find where Padre is. Hey guys, it's Dan, your host, Judy Andrews Reviews, and today I'm back for another video for Fear of the Walking Dead, and in today's video, we're going to be doing another top 10 list video. This one is going over my top 10 least favorite characters of Fear of the Walking Dead. Alright guys, this one's going to be doing another view today, this one's going to be doing another view for Fear of the Walking Dead, and in today's video we're going to be doing another discussion topic, this one is our top 10 least favorite characters of Fear of the Walking Dead up till this point. So Fear is done, Fear of the Walking Dead is over, and this is our last Fear of the Walking Dead ranking video that I had planned for you guys, so probably this will be our last Fear video as well, um, at least until we get the Blu-ray for Fear Season 8, which that's definitely something we'll do a video for, but besides that, um, I'm pretty much fresh out for fear topics i'm pretty much now moving on to uh ones who live daryl dixon stuff like that we did a few videos on that this week as well too but um yeah let's conclude fear let's do it so top 10 least favorite characters let's get into it number 10 my 10th least favorite character of fear is going to go to rabbi jacobs what in the world was even the point of this character? <laughs> Seriously, what was the actual point of this character? He does nothing. He's introduced in a bottled episode. Then he randomly just stands there and, you know, preaches at friggin' Lawton for a little bit. And I think that's it. Like, <laughs> seriously, I literally think that's it. He just stands there every once in a while, just kind of stands there, does nothing. Like, yeah, seriously, like, he has to be in a top 10. He's the most useless, dumb character I've ever seen. Number nine is then going to be Howard. Oh my god, this guy got on my nerves. Um, this guy, th just the way he talks, just the way he expresses himself, he acts like a freaking idiot. He's like, ugh, um, Victor Strand, he has the this butterfly collection. I want you to find this extremely rare butterfly. Oh, you call yourself the Dark Horses? I'm like, what the frick kind of like, <laughs> what kind of character is this? And he's like Strand's butler. I mean, it's like the most cringeworthy thing I've ever seen. He's not good. The actor even at times I find very just kind of off and kind of just off-centered and stuff like that. I don't like this character at all. Number eight is then going to be Tom. Mr. Selfie Pants over here. So, yes, this is the guy that friggin' of course like stays on the bridge while it's clearly collapse uh, collapsing and Morgan and them are running and he stands there with a friggin' camera. Meanwhile, he knows that the thing is falling. He's like, what they were doing here, it means something. Ah! It's like... At that moment, I knew the writers had to be messing because there ain't no way somebody just did that and that's supposed to be a meaningful death. Like, seriously, if you think that death is supposed to be meaningful, then you obviously have not watched the show properly because that was absolutely stupid. Um, That was terrible. Number seven is then going to go to Connor. One of the most overhyped characters I've ever seen. Like, seriously, I've, I've never seen such an overhyped character in all my life. Literally, this guy is, like, brought up to be this, like, feared, very scary guy. He's, like, a really intimidating fella. And then he shows up for two seconds, gets bit on the arm, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously. Like, I don't even understand what the hell happened. I don't understand what the hell the point of this character is, to be honest. And he's like a pansy. He falls for a very obvious trap. He gets bit on the arm, literally raises his arm up, mind you. Like, I just can't even... This guy, I don't know what the hell the hype was with him and why they're like building him up as this big thing, but yeah, no, he did not pay off at all. He was pathetic, absolutely pathetic. Coming into number six is then going to be Jimbo, the beer man. Oh my dear God, man. This guy, holy frick. You want to talk about a character that got on my damn nerves? This is one right here. Holy frick. I mean, seriously, this guy brews beer, okay, in the apocalypse, which is already kind of a goofy idea itself, but whatever. He, he brews beer in the apocalypse, so be it. He goes out there, Morgan saves him, and instantly I hated him. Morgan saves his love, and he's like, how long does it take to, to, to run a across the damn field? Or whatever the hell he says. It's been so long, I, haven't, I can't even remember half of it. But he, like, complains at Morgan. And then, like, the whole episode, he's just like, Morgan, you did this, and Morgan, you did this, and Morgan, it's like... Like, what are you doing? Like, seriously. And then you get, like, one moment where he finally is about to apologize to Morgan after episodes and episodes of roasting this guy for no reason. He's like, Morgan, you know, about what I said back there, I really want to apologize. Zombies get in the way. Two seconds later, Morgan, you said we'd be safe, man. You, What is wrong with you? I'm like, 
honestly, get bit, you frigger. Like, seriously. And he then he did. And then he died. And then, you know, and I hear all the time the Fear fan base being like, oh my god, but Jim's sacrifice was so legendary. Who gives a frig? Honestly, good that he jumped off. <laughs> like, seriously. He was so friggin' annoying. Even when he was bit and he was dying, he's like sitting there and he's just like, well, if you, if you trip and break your neck, well, I guess we'll just call that a bonus. I'm like, oh my god. Like, seriously, die already. Like, you cannot tell me that these writers were not seeing this. Like, this guy is so annoying. This guy is so bad. Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand. The consistency was off. Everything was off. It's terrible. Speaking of consistency being off, number five is going, then going to go to Wes. Holy frick. Talk about a character that I have never been so disappointed with in all my life. He kills his brother because he's so loyal to Morgan's group. Okay, fine, fine. But then randomly flips on our group because Luciana lies to an old man that has dementia. So then, for some odd reason, he decides that everybody is just as bad as Luciana. He decides everybody's just as bad. And he doesn't want to be a part of it. Okay, all right, fair enough. I mean, your logic's dumb, but whatever. Then he goes to Strand's Tower, the biggest moron of them all, and he should know this by now. He goes there, tries to become his right-hand man for crying out loud, then somehow takes over his group within like a day or two of being there. I don't know what the frick he did to make the group turn that quick. I really don't. And, you know, like we're talking about Rangers that have been on Strand's side for like months and months and almost like a year at this point. Like, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And his death is downright stupid. I mean, his death is so dumb. And he wants to kill Alicia, and he wants to kill Strand. It's just like, oh, man. Like, consistency-wise, he's honestly the worst character. I'm not even lying. Like, just consistent writing, he's actually the worst one. I can't even get over what they did with him. He's so bad. Um, number four is then going to go to... And this one I feel like people are definitely not going to enjoy. Number four is then going to go to Sarah. I know Sarah has her defenders. I know a lot of people really, really like Sarah. I am the exact opposite of that. I cannot stand this character. Mo Collins, no offense to her, she can't act. This character is so bad. Literally, you'll have a scene where she runs into Wen and like Wendell, and she hasn't even seen him for like, what, like two years? And she goes up to him and she's just like, <gasps> When? 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 Yeah, seriously, when is this scene over? Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand this character. Every two seconds, like, she's sitting there like, we got bear, oh, you can suck it. I'm like, what the frig is this? Like, seriously. Like, do you think, like, she's, like, gonna be, what, the next Tara or something from The Walking Dead? Like, what are they trying to do? Sarah Tara? Like, I don't, I don't get it, man. Sarah had really, really bad humor. Tara had good humor in Walking Dead. Tara was good. Sarah? No, not at all. She's cringeworthy. She's absolutely ridiculous. She can barely do anything. Like, yeah, no. Honestly, she brews beer the whole time. She drives around in a truck singing Convoy while you've got clear, bigger problems going on. Like, I just, no, I don't like this character at all. And some people may sit there and say, oh, well, Dan, you're not giving a specific reason on why Sarah is flawed for you. You know, you're, you're giving flawed reasons. Well, they're my opinions and they're my reasons and I don't like this character, plain and simple. Um, <laughs> I had some people tell me on the last video, like, your opinions are flawed, Dan. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? This ain't your opinion. This is mine. This is my point of view, my opinion on the show. Point being, I don't like Sarah. That's uh, that plain and simple. Number three is then going to go to Crane. Oh, my God. Honestly, talk about the most random character I have ever seen. Honestly, I've never seen such a random character in all my life. He is this scared little boy that is running after his dad to give him a pair of binoculars because apparently he can't see what's coming before. So, okay. So without binoculars, your dad can't see nothing is what you're trying to tell me. Okay. And then he hides behind a mirror for like 12 years. Somehow nobody knows that the dad is dead within this time. And they just don't know anything. Like, that's so dumb. Not to mention, he runs away like a little pansy. Comes back for like five minutes in episode 11. And then gets devoured by walkers. Like, I, I don't understand this character. I really don't. And, you know... Honestly, one time I have to flaw June as well, too. Why did June let him live? Like, I don't get that at all. I really don't understand. Like, sure, you can make the death less painful, you know, but why would you spare him? Like, I don't understand any of that. That makes no sense. He came back and he was a big problem. And it's like, of course he was. He was running Padre for like 12 years, like with his psychotic sister over here, which we'll get to her in a second. Number two is then going to go to Martha. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. She's got walkers on a freaking stick. 
she's rambling on to Morgan saying that she's going to make him strong and she's going to make him this and she's going to make him that and all this stuff. And then Morgan's the dumbass that freaking tries to help her. Like, seriously. And she loses an arm and even without an arm, she's still annoying. And she turns finally in the finale and I just don't get her motives. I don't get her motives. I don't understand why she's trying to make Morgan strong. I don't even understand why she's so obsessed with Morgan, to be honest. I, I really don't. Um, it's like she almost had like a little crush on him, which was kind of just weird and creepy and not good. The writing was awful. And then finally, number one is then going to go to Shrike. Oh my God, man. Shrike. Frickin Shrike. Yeah. Hands down the worst character Fear of the Walking Dead has ever done. I don't get this acting. The acting is not good. It's like actually like robotic. It's, it's horrible. You know, like how many know that you're Padre's daughter? Oh, not many. Hmm. Not many. Nightingale, I need you to clear this and this and that. Like, are we supposed to like be like scared of this character? Like, I don't understand. And she wanders around freaking like saying, oh, we need Madison. Oh, no, we don't need Madison. Oh, I'm here to save all the kids in the world, but I'm going to make sure one gets bit in the process. Sure. That makes a lot of freaking sense. She looks stupid with the freaking afro on her head. Like, and then she, her death is like the cringiest thing. She just sees her father. Somehow her father after 12 years is just still perfectly in uniform, perfectly has the freaking like binoculars. Like get the frig out of here, man. And she just like lets herself get devoured, you know, like she just dies. That's it. Like th this is the psycho that like kept our group locked up for like seven years. Her and this freaking idiot brother. Oh man. Honestly, I, I, I can't even get over how bad she is. She's so terrible. But anyway. There you go, I guess. There is my top 10 least favorite characters of Fear of the Walking Dead of all time. Let me know your list in the comment section below. Who are your least favorite characters of Fear? Post that down below. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoy videos like this, make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos of The Walking Dead. Be sure to follow me on Dan's The Walking Dead Reviews on Instagram, guys. And of course, I'll see you guys really soon for more videos of Fear of the Walking Dead. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and peace out. <laughs>